Cyclone Tej blowing up as it nears Socotra Island. Well, this is a storm that really appears to be rapidly intensifying, almost like Gatti if I'm being honest. So it is a little bit further towards the east and it's going to be moving in a different direction to that storm. We're giving it category 2 status at this point, 11.2 north, 56.8 degrees east. And it is blowing up right now as mentioned. As of 8pm Gulf Standard Time this October 21st, it had winds of 105 miles per hour, 170 kilometers per hour, with an estimated pressure of 971 millibars, moving west-northwest at 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. 9.30 p.m. in India, of course, and this is the current position displayed on the map with its wind field extending out uh, fairly equally with its uh, northwestern quadrant slightly the higher at 65 nautical miles. A category 2 that we're giving it right now and probably going to strengthen to category 3 status maybe even further. It is 290 kilometers from Socotra, that large island nearby, 496 from Abd al Khuri, a smaller island to the west, 708 from Salalah in Oman, 749 from Al Gaida in Yemen, and 943 from Dukiam further to the east along the coast of Oman. All of these locations could be affected with strong winds and definitely uh, some elevated rainfall amounts of varying proportions. But we are mostly concerned for flash flooding. In some areas we could see 32 inches of rainfall in Oman up to 800 millimeters with the storm expected to stall and die off as it reaches land. Significant amounts also expected on Socotra, with heavy rainfall and high rain rates likely to cause flash flooding, particularly in coastal regions. And also want to mention there uh, the potential for landslides as well. Very dry areas of the planet, of course, uh, really elevated chances for that. So through the weekend, Socotra will get a glancing blow, and then Monday, Tuesday, it's not fully in set in stone yet this track, uh, but it could end up making landfall very close to Salalah, a significant city along the coast of southern Oman, uh, and then we expect it might move towards the northeast, but the latest GFS model still has it moving westwards as it makes landfall. Either way, it looks like it's going to be a close call for that area. So as you can see, we are well off the chart with our estimate right now. I think that a lot of them are struggling to keep up with this storm's rapid intensification that's occurred over the course of this afternoon into the evening. I think you'll find that tomorrow uh, a lot of these agencies will be pretty much up there, if not even higher, if this storm continues to intensify overnight. When we show you the satellite, you might get an idea how. JTWC, to their credit, does forecast sustained rapid intensification up to Category 4 status by tomorrow uh, at a similar time to this update. So in about 24 hours, they're expecting a Category 4 and then a gradual weakening and a substantial weakening just before landfall. They only have a 40 knot landfall there. This is the GFS model calling for the storm, as mentioned there, to really weaken very quickly as it reaches land. And that's why we're probably not quite as concerned about wind as we are for rainfall. But on that GFS run, it does take it to the west after it first makes landfall. There's the initial hit there for Socotra, just about reaching tropical storm status there. And then along the coast of Omar, near the border with Yemen, Yemen um, it, we could see substantial strong winds there and obviously extremely heavy rainfall. So taking a look at the uh, radar simulation there, what it might look like, and you can see a very strong core, especially on that northern side as the storm draws nearer to the coast of the Arabian Peninsula. And then as it moves inland, those rain amounts really drop off very quickly after the storm hits land. So it's really crucial whether the storm makes landfall before it stalls or whether it stalls before it makes landfall will be a massive point to consider when we're talking about the rainfall potential. Um, if it does make landfall beforehand, then obviously the dry conditions over the desert there will really um, tone it down. 
but that's not currently what's forecasted. Let's take a look at the rainfall expectations then. So on Socotra there, we're looking at substantial amounts of rain, but really nothing compared to what we might see near Salalar and wherever this storm makes landfall. As mentioned, we could see in excess of 32 inches of rain. In fact, there's even one location there in that near white, white zone getting up to 35 inches, nearly 36 actually. That's 900 millimeters, which would be an extraordinary amount for this area. And also getting up towards three inches for Socotra Island. That will be falling quite quickly. So certainly the chance for flash flooding. And then along the coast of Oman, moving up towards the Kiam, uh, still getting significant amounts, but not quite as much uh, between those areas. Sea surface temperatures look very good, which are going to fuel this storm pretty well over the next couple of days. And that's why one of the reasons why we're looking at this rapid intensification phase right now. 27 degrees minimum, it's probably higher than that. This uh, is based on surface temperatures rather than sea temperatures, so it's going to be a little bit warmer. Um, so 28, 29, maybe even 30 degrees near the coast of Oman when it makes that landfall. So then let's take a look at the satellite imagery because it's quite important to see how this storm has progressed in a very short amount of time and you can probably see it for yourself there. Really tight looking eye wall structure that's been burgeoning in the last few hours and look at those last visible images before the sun set in the area really blowing up massive amounts of convection mainly around that southern side extending around to the eastern side and this is the ram uh, infrared imagery where you can see that eye really starting to appear appear in those later frames and at the last check the eye temperature was down to minus 48 degrees celsius and that will continue to blow through i imagine um, with the cloud tops really blowing up and the eye substantially deepening it's quite clear to see even on that imagery structure wise this storm also looks pretty impeccable and already you can see that some of the rainfall and banding from the storm is reaching Socotra Island it could be a very dangerous few days for this region <laughs>